Now let's quickly discuss about how to evaluate absolute maximum shear force and absolute maximum bending moment in cantilever beams and simply supported beams. Why are we only discussing about cantilever beams and simply supported beams? In reality, in, in the case of bridges, we do not have anything other than simply supported beams or hanging beams and cantilever beams. So, the important thing here is when it comes to finding out the absolute maximum bending moment or absolute maximum shear force, you have to somehow tactically arrange your loads and look at a point in the beam where you might get maximum bending moment or shear force. So two things that are important. One thing is arrangement of loads and the second thing is the point in the beam where you are looking for the maximum shear or maximum bending moment. So for example, if I take a cantilever beam and if I am looking for a point uh, where max, absolute maximum shear force occurs, the important thing is no matter where I place my loads, the absolute maximum shear will always happen in the vicinity of the fixed support. I can put the loads here, somewhere here or somewhere anywhere on the span, the absolute maximum shear force is definitely going to happen um, in the vicinity of the rigid support. So where should I place the loads and where should I look for the maximum, absolute maximum bending moment in the case of um, cantilever beams? So for example, in the case of cantilever beams, in order to get the absolute maximum bending moment, you have to look at, once again at the support, and you have to place the heaviest loads towards the free end. So that means if you can place all your loads towards the free end, you will get the absolute maximum bending moment at this particular point. So these are pretty self-explanatory. You have drawn several shear force and bending moment diagrams. So just by intuition, you should be able to tell this. Same is true when you are looking at the shear force, absolute maximum shear force in the case of simply supported beams. You will get absolute maximum shear forces in the case of simply supported beams. If you can place the loads heavier loads pretty close to the supports. So if you can arrange somehow these loads towards the supports and have the heaviest ones sitting pretty close to the supports, you will get the maximum, absolute maximum shear force at the supports. But finding out the location and the arrangement, the location of the absolute maximum bending moment location in the beam and the arrangement of the loads in the case of uh, simply supported beam is not that easy uh, when you are looking at absolute maximum bending moment. For example, if you have three loads, if you have three loads and FR is the resultant, if FR is the resultant, you will have three cases. You, you will have to evaluate the bending moment in the case of three cases and compare them. The first case is where this F1 and F4 are equidistant from the center of the beam. Center of the beam. And the second case is when F2 and F4 are equidistant from the beam, uh, center line of the beam. And the third case is when F4 and F3 are equidistant from the center of the beam. So I'll, I'll let you know how to evaluate F4 in a while. But for now, remember that F4 is nothing but the resultant force of these three forces. So. Where should you evaluate the bending moment after you arrange the loads? For example, if I am looking at the case 1, where I place F1 and FR equidistant from the center, I should evaluate the bending moment below F1. If I am uh, placing F2 and FR equidistant from the center, I have to evaluate the bending moment under F2. If I am looking uh, at FR and F3, if I am placing these two loads equidistant from the center, I have to evaluate the bending moment under F3. The bending moment I got in the case 1 should be compared with the bending moments I got from case 2 and case 3 and the maximum among these three bending moments will be the absolute maximum bending moment that will be encountered by this particular beam for the corresponding arrangement of loads. So now let's look at an example. Now let's quickly look at an example. The most important thing is, although evaluation of the absolute maximum bending moment is covered in influence line diagrams chapter, evaluation of absolute maximum bending moment 
or evaluation of absolute maximum shear force in 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 beams will not require influence line diagrams. Please be very careful about that. And the problem will be given to you like this. You will be given with a set of rolling loads and in the exam I will tell you what is the exact direction in which these loads are moving. For example, I may tell you that the loads are moving from left to right or from right to left. So it becomes very easy for you. So you just have to uh, worry about one case. So here once again I have three loads and they are not equidistant. Please remember that. So the very first step is I have to find out the resultant force. <coughs> Finding out the resultant force is very easy, but it can be tricky if you don't do it, if you don't understand it well. So the magnitude of the resultant force is obtained by just simply adding up all the three uh, loads. In this case, 2 plus 1.5 plus 1, which is 4.3k. And when you evaluate the distance of the FR from one of these loads, what you have to do is you have to take the moment of FR from this point uh, uh, from where F1 is lying and equate it to the moments that, that the other loads will generate about this point. So the moment that is generated by FR about this point should be equal to some of the moments generated by all the loads about this point. Once again, the moment generated by the resultant force at this point should be equal to some of the moments that are generated by all the three loads. So here, here, 4.5 times x is the moment that is generated by FR that is equal to 1.5 times 10 that is the moment generated by 1.5 and um, 1 times 15 that is the moment generated by 1 and the moment generated by 2 is actually equal to 0 because I am looking to evaluate the moment about this point, about the point under F1. Okay, that is how you evaluate the uh, resultant force. So, I will have three cases, <coughs> I will have three cases in this case because I have three loads. Um, in this particular example, I chose to place the FR equidistant from 1.5k as the first case. I can, I, can, uh, I can choose to work with any of the case first. In this case, I went with FR and 1.5k equidistant from the center of the beam. And when once I chose this one, I have to evaluate the shear force uh, uh, I have to evaluate the bending moment under this load and it turns out to be turns out to be uh, turns out to be 21.7 I could repeat the exact same thing for the other two cases um, I have to evaluate like in the second case I had this 2k and FR placed equidistant from the center and I evaluated the bending moment under this load 2k which turns out to be which turns out to be 20.4 kip feet and you could repeat the exact same exercise for the third load too but I somehow figured out that the case 1 is the most maximum absolute maximum bending moment and this has to be carried out for all the problems that you may get in the exam you can expect similar kind of problem in the final exam and uh, the procedure should be exactly the same. The only tricky thing is to evaluate the FR. Magnitude of FR is nothing but the sum of the forces acting on the beam. And the location can be determined by equating the moments that are generated by the uh, resultant force to the sum of the moments that are generated by the applied wheel loads. So this concludes our discussion on absolute maximum bending moment. Uh, please refer to the video tutorial I created um, about influence line diagrams to review your influence line diagrams. And for chapter 6, um, I already created the video tutorial, so you should be fine.